so here we are it's uh late february and uh, we're in western oregon here and this is the beautiful willamette river um i uh i'm starting this little channel called paddle west and we'll come up with a few different things over time here but uh everything from how i like to trip or the way we trip sometimes on the willamette and other rivers and lakes and uh, gear reviews and all that sort of thing I've had the luxury to paddle for a couple of decades now. I love canoeing. Uh, it's a big part of my life. And uh, maybe in viewing these videos, you'll see uh, that it's not really all that hard. And we could talk about some of the barriers to entry. Um, but uh, I'll just try to provide some uh, good guidance from my perspective and my experience. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So packing a canoe. Um, different considerations uh, um, you know I'm lucky today and tomorrow and the next day that I'm actually not having to portage anything so I don't have to take all my gear from lake to lake or get over tough sections of river uh, this is a big wide moving water river uh, it's got some pools but other than that uh, you don't have a lot of uh, taking gear out out of your boat and putting it back in and taking it out and putting it back in uh, as a consequence, I have uh, quite a few different items here, and uh, so I'll do a little, little show and tell here of how I like to think of packing a canoe. One of the coolest things about uh, rivers i think and, and pertains to some lakes certainly as well but uh is finding neat rocks especially agates and uh, out here when the river rises and it cranks up for a period of weeks and then it falls back down everything gets stirred up or at least it has the opportunity to get stirred up and you find really cool things like this uh this is a, a nice uh, kind of mid-range agate if you could call it that uh, we find all types here but this really has some nice uh, coloration and uh, but I always keep my eyes out for these and on days like today where we're lucky and the sun's out in western Oregon in winter uh, you have a good chance of seeing them especially as the sun starts going down pretty cool uh, in recent times I've seen some uh, out in, here in the west anyway uh, some judgment about flat water paddling and if you're not wearing a wetsuit in the winter or a, better yet a dry suit um, but really you know you have to use your brain and assess your paddling skills the water body you're on and the relative risk uh, again if I had an issue on this waterway and I got wet and had an unplanned swim um, I've got lots of layers in my bag there that's easy access right on top and I could get changed out quickly and avoid hypothermia again which is uh, a significant risk in any waterway, any time of year, depending on where you are. So what we're going to do today uh, is take advantage of this awesome weather and uh, get out on the water here in late February in Western Oregon. And again, I, um, I think one of the very appealing things about this part of North America is that in the winter it can be pretty mild. Certainly we don't have the warmth of uh, California or the Southwest or the Southeast for that matter, but um, there's a lot of days you can paddle. They aren't always sunny like this one. Uh, it's a little unusual for us here in February, but uh, uh, just a really mild climate. Um, I've been paying a lot of attention to uh, the weather in, uh, in northern Minnesota and Ontario where we know we have some amazing places to paddle. Um, but I'll take this any time uh, this time of year. The same could be said for days in November, December, and January as well. So we're, we're pretty lucky this way. Stuck over here to river left around this island due to the down trees on that right channel. Always got to pay attention to what's downstream and uh, stay looking downstream, especially after we've had high water anywhere and it recedes. Things can change from one time to the next, so it's uh, something that any canoeist or kayaker 
stand-up paddleboarder, drift boater, uh, needs to be aware of. Uh, let's say a month and a quarter, month and a half, all these cottonwoods will be leafing out and beautiful green. day out here. Here and there I see um, bits of plastic and other debris kind of hung up in the trees, which is not atypical for a river like this that runs through cities and towns of varying sizes. It's obviously unfortunate, but um, in addition to working to get this stuff out of here, it does give you an indication of how high this water gets. Again, side channels like this can often have wood in the water. You just have to be aware of it and see where the current's going and think about where you're going to be in your boat. So, not to belabor the point, but uh, the sun is incredible for kind of a chilly February week. We had highs around freezing, which I know to some of you is no big deal, uh, but in Western Oregon, we're not as used to it. And uh, certainly having some days in the 50s and nights in the 20s, uh, it's just really, really nice conditions. Got to take it where we can get it. Oh, wow. What a sight. All these beautiful gravels. We're going to camp up that little pathway there that used to be a, a lane into this property back in the day. But now it's a campsite. And there's another campsite about 150 meters downstream. Just a beautiful, beautiful spot. So here we are, it's getting toward 5 o'clock and the sun is getting lower in the sky. This beautiful gravel bar, just full of agates, they're lighting up in the sun. You can't see them, but I've uh, had a pretty good effort the last half hour here. Sweet. Good morning. Uh, it's been a great night last night at this campsite and uh, got down to maybe 25, 26 degrees, but I was plenty warm and um, took a good walk at this big site today. Not all of the sites on this stretch of river are like this, but uh, it's about 100 acres, so I got to explore around a little bit. And you see my tent uh, behind me. And then uh, further down there, you can see the canoe and the river. It's an old outhouse that was uh, decommissioned because it wasn't properly set and it's too close to the to the water 
the site worked out great. It's in the floodplain forest and it's uh, relatively flat. It's an old lane and uh, as you walk inland you have an opportunity to kind of explore around. Yeah, so today uh, the rain came in and it was forecasted for a little bit later, but uh, it's always a good idea to bring along a shell, uh, you know, pants and, and a top jacket, uh, you know, layering in this type of weather where you're kind of feeling like it's warm and it's chilly and it's warm and then you get the rain on top of it. Uh, it's just always a good thing to have uh, a shell or two uh, in your pack. Uh, so I'm going to get ready here and we're going to pack up and head down river. All right, so uh, well packed and ready to go, except for a tripod I got to jam in there somewhere. But uh, I had the spray cover for this boat for quite a while and actually hadn't used it, came with it. I thought, oh, hey, what the heck? We'll throw it on today and see how it looks. It looks great. Um, I've got my big dry box up front and another bag that is making it... Um, really hard to snap every single snap and you don't want to put over pressure on those snaps on this thing but uh it's a yeah looks great and i think uh would meet its intended purpose if i was in really big water all right and leaving our campsite and heading down river in the rain so uh all along the willamette we have periodic pilings that were once uh, installed with other <laughs> parts of the structure to try to deflect water from these side channels around these islands. Uh, so you just have to be really mindful when you're approaching them. Like a lot of other rivers, uh, people sought to keep the side channels from getting a lot of water and to try to relegate the main part of the water back to the main channel on the left side here. Um, this is kind of an old remnant might not be able to see it that well, but there's a beautiful side channel down here around this island and uh, we like to take these. There's a better view of what that looks like. Just gonna slide down here. Get ready for a little bit of eddy action and that sort of thing. Love exploring these side channels. This one's about oh, a mile and a half long or so. Generally has a lot of water. Also has some long-lived freshwater mussels called western pearl shells. They are totally cool. We won't see them today. If I see a shell, I'll point it out. So once again, uh, I saw a gravel bar I hadn't been by in a while. And it is been high flows and raining and uh and step out of the boat whoa what about here not that interesting not quite a very colorful agate but uh you get the idea all the stuff this channel getting so big and uh bringing just all this new gravel and moving gravel around more than that and uh looking down the side channel Saw this at a distance. It could be interesting. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's, uh, it's some real kind of carnelian type stuff going on there. That recessed spot. Orange on this side, a little more white on that side. All those pebbles in there. That's super cool. Even on a cloudy day, you can see the color coming through there. Sweet. Yeah, now you know why I was so excited about the sun yesterday. Just saying. Something that's uh, totally wild to see, quite literally, uh, <laughs> is a, a tree like this one in the distance here where, you know, the water was higher and uh, the beavers came in and they just worked on those branches with the bark and nod the bark off so that's why you see that kind of area that's up higher because this channel was that high in the last uh, six weeks.
Well, hey, I'm glad you checked out this video to see uh, what the Willamette in Western Oregon is like. Uh, it's sometimes in the late winter. Um, again, fairly mild conditions. I mean, it's chilly. It's in the 40s today, high 40s. But uh, great river, lots of camp campsites. I just did a quick one-nighter. Uh, we'll be doing more of these uh, throughout Oregon and, and the West in the coming weeks and months. And uh, also look forward to uh, returning to the Northwoods uh, in a few months. But um, again, get out there. I hope what I have done here has showed maybe some new folks uh, how you go about doing some of this. I'll talk a little bit more about gear uh, later on and we'll compare and contrast some different kind of basic gear needs. Um, and I think the whole idea is figuring out how to do this stuff and do it, you know, safely and easily and economically. Um, because really this type of thing is approachable to a wide range of people. So, uh, thanks again. Bye.